worshiping a savior. Amen. I'm born again, my friends. And I love Jesus Christ. Unajua hiyo ndio tulikuwa tunasemanga zamani. Tukikutana tunasema na nimeokoka. Na nampenda Yesu sana. Na kutoka tu achane wapendwa. I have not left. That place where I was, I am still there. And I was here on Wednesday and I have not left. I'm still praising my savior. Oh, the day long. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus, my savior and my Lord. You can have your seat. Yes. Mulingiri wapi? I have noticed that the doors are closed. So you are in the order of Jesus Christ. You enter even when the doors are closed. Mhm. I realize the doors to this place are closed because at the of Jen, at the night when Jen what? Tunajua I asked my daughter this morning taught me those things and told me, "Mom, you you are me." Eh? But yeah, we are what now? X. Yes, so sisi ni my X. Lakini hiyo X tunai tunaipindua inaingia cross the real cross of hiyo nsikupenda niliambiwa x ni ati mimi niko x nikakataa nikasema mimi si wa x x ni mbaya x ni wrong sasa tuinue isimame ya kina sisi tuinue isimame tuweke cross generation cross of Jesus Christ and then ate kuna that so we have some excess uh, uh, some crosses here yeah. and then we have i don't know mill eh? Millennials, my daughter just told me, I just escaped millennials. So, and then there is Z, then there is Alpha, Beta, also be Omega. That's mercy on us. And I think we need also to just pray for this generation to be so uh, Holy Ghosted, so filled of the Holy Ghost, so that they can burn the city for Jesus. You didn't get excited about it. But I'm excited about it. Thank you, Pastor Mark. Yesterday you stood in for me. Uh, I had an assignment to take some place up north. And I had to go there. And the Lord graced us greatly in that assignment. And the house of the Lord has many people. Now uh, all these things are ours. Yes, and the house of the Lord has many people. So, Pastor Mark stood in for me. I'm not sure what he spoke. I, I had given him a call to find out what did you speak so that I don't repeat. But he, he never picked my call on time. So, he started calling me when I was almost coming down here. So, I knew I can't confirm. So, right now, I'm speaking out of the Holy Ghost. Not because I'm informed by Pastor Mark. Although many times when he preaches, I usually pick from there. And then I keep going. Then I pretend that I'm so holy ghost and anointed. And I can really get these revelations. Kumbe, I got them from Kina Pastor Mark and Pastor Gigi. But they are also full of the Holy Ghost anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. So, I, yes. What is the topic, my friends? And so, all those who are not here, I'm sure you are there. Tunawasalimu kwa jina la Yesu, Christo, Anasareti. If only you are here to share the joy here, you would know it is not by might or by strength. It's by the Spirit of God. Amen? Yes. So, the posture for divine acceleration. And I started on Wednesday. And I'm very happy we are not many because I'm not under pressure. But I know we are many the other side. But you know I'm not seeing you and you and uh, yes, I'm not seeing you. So I'm in the presence of God and I'm happy. Amen. So I started talking about the 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 the, the posture of Emmanuel, or that you know, you know, uh, talking about the presence of God. That when we host the presence of God, I tell you the truth, we never move like men. We never move like mere men. No, we keep knocking them down. We keep knocking the mountains down. We keep flying over far valleys. Yes, and we keep flying over walls. How many people you have ever dreamt flying over a wall? It means you are with the Lord. Yes, we fly over walls. Because we are, you, you remember Elijah? 
after Mount Carmel, you know what happened. He had been in the presence of God. And he was with God. He is an amazing man. He keeps saying, as the Lord lives before whom I stand. He knows how to stand in the presence of God. And when you stand in the presence of the Lord, you are not alone. You come with God. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says he sent a message to Ahab. And he said, go tell that man to run quickly with his horse. He may did not get on a horse. He told him, go and tell the man to run quickly with a horse because I can hear now the appetites of rain. If he doesn't want to be rained on, let him get his horse and run. And then the Bible says, they have started running to Israel, but Elijah started running faster than horses can run. Oh, hallelujah. Why? He overtook her up because there was an acceleration. Who shut her There was an acceleration. I know God will give me people here whom we can fellowship together on this. There was an acceleration. There was an acceleration. And that acceleration was because of divine presence. That's what I'm talking about. It was because of divine presence. And you will host the presence of God. So let me continue with this. Yes, and he keeps screaming like John, the Baptist in the wilderness, and the Lord will cause people from the city to come out there in the wilderness to hear the voice of God. So we need the more to understand how to host the presence of God. Many people host demons, but we shall host the presence of God. Many people host all kinds of things, but we shall host the presence of God, like Elijah. My contention is, those who learn to host the presence of the Lord, they will move faster than mere men. Are we together? I'm asking, are we together? I started reading Hebrews 9. Yes. Um, let me look for it. I started to read Hebrews 9 from verse 1. Yes. Talking about hosting the presence of God. Remember, remember we said that God is omni, omni, omnipresent. But God never moves in omnipresence. God moves where he is hosted. Stop looking at Pastor Mark. I'm the one here. Amen. God is omni. But how comes he's not saving everybody everywhere? How comes there are earthquakes? How comes there are floods? How comes there's trouble in nations, in families, and in villages, in cities? Although he is omnipresent, and he is everywhere. Are we together? Are we together? How comes he is not moving? Simple. He doesn't move. In the air, he moves when he is brought to men by other men. I think that's what I'm saying. He moves when he is brought to men. Even demons move around people when they are brought to people by other men, by carriers. But you see, if you carry Jesus, Jesus is higher than a devil. Yes, in Jesus' name. Are we together? So the Bible says then indeed, even the first covenant and Ordinances of divine service and the other sanctuary. S22, for a tabernacle was prepared. Are we together? For a tabernacle was prepared. The first part in which was the lampstand, the table, and the shield bread, which is called the sanctuary. Yes. And behind the second veil, the path of the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which and the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid on all signs with gold, in which were the golden pot, that and the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant. Let's try to tie it up. And above it were the cherubim of glory, overshandling the mercy seat of these things, 
we cannot now speak. What Paul is doing, if you continue reading the, uh, chapter 9, he is talking about two tabernacles. He is talking about two tabernacles, two sanctuaries, two dwelling places of the Lord. He is saying, even, you remember verse 1, that's the way it starts. Even, that's how it starts. It says, then indeed, even the first covenant or even the Old Testament, even God's people in the days of old and the tabernacle. He basically wants to develop that thought and that argument to show the Jews, the Hebrews, that now, even now, God still is looking for a tabernacle. Are we together? Even now, God is looking for a tabernacle. God still wants to dwell among his people. And he is looking for men who become tabernacles. Who do what? Who become tabernacles and carries the presence of God among people. Among men. This city is not devoid of politicians and Gen Z's. Yes. This city is devoid of moving tabernacles. That is what this city is devoid of. Churches are not devoid of pastors and singers. Churches are devoid of physical moving tabernacles mm -hmm. that carry the presence of the Lord. Now then, it starts to talk about this tabernacle and it has implications or we can learn. We can learn from this tabernacle because remember, the old is a shando and it is a shando or an example, if you will, of the, of the, of the, of the present. The Old Testament is a shando of the New Testament. So they are parallels and we can learn from that, from the old. I pray that I would go through this and finish. So I'll just stand here and read my notes. Praise the Lord. So, the first covenant which is, you know, of the Old Testament is the tabernacle of Moses. There God dwelt. Now, the Bible says concerning this tabernacle, it had the Hebrews talk of two places, but we know there are three. And the, the three, the first one is the, that which was called the outer court. I want you to concentrate. The outer court. This is not bless you, bless me kind of a thing. This is instruction. This is, this is knowledge. This is knowledge. It is gotten by a spirit of knowledge. In the name of Jesus. Amen? And in the outer court is the, places, is the place for the, for the sacrifices. And we talked enough about the law and the posture of sacrifice. That one we did. I will not go back there. You can go and listen to it there. But now when you are through with sacrifice, then you enter what now Paul is calling the first. But really it is the second. But he decides to talk about the enclosure itself. So he is not wrong because he's just talking about the enclosure of the tabernacle because the first was the outer part. It was not a part of that inner enclosure. Hallelujah. And he says the first one, yes, and divine service, ordinance of divine service, so there were services there, and it was a physical sanctuary. Note the word physical sanctuary. The Lord is still looking for a physical sanctuary, physical tabernacle. Are we together? And it goes to tell us about the second part, which is calling the first. And he says in that, continue. Mm. In that first place, he says, in that enclosure, he says, in which was the lamp stand. And I think this is what we will do today. There was a lamp stand here. And there was a table. And there was a showbread. Some people call it the shoe bread. Which is called the sanctuary. Are we together? Are you following me? Now let me teach you a little bit. The candlestick here, they are, these are things in that, in that place. The candlestick here is what is usually called the menorah. 
by the Hebrews, by the Jews, by the Jew in the Jewish language. Now, and then there is a table. So there is a table, and this table is not empty. It has bread. It's called shoe bread. This table is a table that has bread, and it is, of course, the scripture says that the bread was supposed to be, you know, 20, uh, 24, I think. I think 12, 12, 12 pieces, 12 loaves of bread representing God's people, representing the tribes of God's people. Yeah? So, the candlestick, let me start there. The candlestick was a, a piece that had seven lamps. It had seven you know, I don't know what to call them, shafts maybe, seven shafts, that on those shafts, there was candles that were put on those seven shafts. Mm -hmm. And those seven shafts, they were lightened. They had light that was on them. Now, what does that mean? to us. We find those candlesticks by the way in Exodus 25 verse 31 to 37 you find them there. They are seven candle shafts. I want to say this that these candle shafts seven of them in this place that have light mm, so that the priest can come into this section of the tabernacle and be able to operate and handle the table and handle the shoe bread, the 12 pieces of bread. And the Bible says, if you read in Exodus, that that bread was to be replaced every Sabbath. So already there are things going on in your mind if you are, if you are awake in the spirit and if you understand spiritual things. It is the bread of the Sabbath. It is the bread of rest. We need to understand these things. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Now, these candles with light, I believe, represents the fullness or the completeness of the Holy Ghost of God, of the Spirit of God. Now, this fullness and completeness, it is supposed to be the fullness and completeness of fellowship. And interaction between the priest and the spirit of God. Listen, between man, the believer, and the spirit of God. Remember, we are looking for we are looking for interpretation and use and application for this in the New Testament. In the New Testament, we ourselves are priests. That's what the Bible teaches us, isn't it? Now one of our dwelling places if we shall host, host in an increasing measure the presence of God and of the Holy Ghost, one of the places we must learn to stay is in this section of the tabernacle. Meaning within us, there must be grace and capacity to be able to handle this section and the issues of this section the matters of this section in the temple. It is a place of the fullness of interaction between the fullness of the Holy Spirit and the priest. Who I am and who you are. If you understand, say amen. Because the Lord wants to fully interact with you. And that is why Paul talks about this prayer we pray. He says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. He says, and the love of God the Father. Then he says, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. That fellowship happens in this part of the tabernacle. Listen, it is a heart prepared. It is the heart of man that has come to fellowship and the fullness of the same. That is why there are seven and we must therefore understand the fullness of the Holy Ghost and the way he deals with men. Amen. 
And I think Isaiah, Isaiah 11 verse 2 speaks to us clearly concerning this fullness of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 8 to 10 tells us even the more concerning this fullness of the Holy Ghost. I pray there's not just knowledge I'm dispensing, but that the Holy Spirit in his fullness is having leeway in somebody's heart right now. Galatians 5, 22, 23 also tells us even the more concerning this fullness of the interaction and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost from the Holy God with men. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let me quickly take a few minutes and explain something about this. Let's start with Isaiah 2. talks about the Spirit of God. They call it the seven spirits of God. Or the, the sevenfold graces that proceed from the Spirit of God. And this is the candlestick. This is represented by these candlesticks. Remember, candlesticks have got to do with the light. They are releasing light. Hallelujah. To the heart of a man that is seeking God. To the heart of a woman that is truly seeking God. Hallelujah. And when they seek him in this way, they shall find him. And when they find him, he shall tabernacle with them. Because they shall be made tabernacles. Thank you, Father. And the Bible calls, says concerning these sevenfold graces that proceed from the Spirit, says first and foremost, is the Spirit of the Lord. Then he starts now to describe other things. He says, the Spirit of wisdom. Now, the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, knowledge and the fear of God. In this part of the tabernacle, there is a dispensing of the spirit of the Lord. Yes, the spirit of the Elohim. So that the spirit of the Elohim can interact with the heart and the soul of a man. Oh yes, thank you Pastor Gigi. Thank you, thank you for encouraging me. But I'm okay. I'm, I'm, very, I'm doing very well. Hallelujah, because it is from my heart. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost transacting with the heart of a man. Let me tell you, this is a secret. This is a secret. Are we together? The spirit of wisdom. The man is seated on the table and there is bread. And listen, this bread is called the bread of his presence. Yes. Are we together? It is called... The bread of his presence. Listen, there is bread you come to sit at. And when you are seated at that table and you are eating of that bread, it is called the bread of his presence. You attract his presence. Yes, you got me. You heard me. I said you heard me. I said you heard me clearly. So you will not need to pursue prophets around. You have the very source. Are you? You have the very source. You will not need to pursue a man of God. You have the very source of all blessings. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. It is also called the bread of his countenance. And so when you are seated on that table, and what is said to do with sitting, it has got to do with the rest. It has got to do with sitting, waiting, quietly, Seeking a set time. Yes, where there is no movement, no physical movement. You are so is quietened in the presence of God. Hallelujah. You are so is at peace. It is still. It is seated. Your mind is seated. This is a secret. Your mind is seated. And God said to Moses, stop crying. Tell the people to stop crying. Let them become still that they may know that I am God. Listen, stop crying about that job. Get still that you may know that Jehovah is 
God. Stop crying about that situation. Get still. And it was until Moses got still and the people got still and all of that. Because listen, God never moves except in stillness. Sit then. Sit then. May you find grace to sit. Concerning that matter, may you find grace to sit. Oh, may God cause you to sit. Hallelujah. In heavenly places with Christ, with Christ the Lord. Can you imagine that? Oh my God. It's too much to speak and it is too wonderful. So when you are seated on that table, then we would have gone now to chapter 6 of the book of John. Then you would have seen the shoe bread. And the shoe bread, the bread on that table is Christ himself. It is his word. It is his doctrine. It is his teaching. It is him. Hallelujah. And as you are seated there on that table and you are in the light, the light of his countenance. Listen, what is countenance? It is this place. Yeah? So when, if you can agree to sit on that table, the Lord is there looking over you. This is not a man. It is the Lord there looking over your family as you sit at that table. Hallelujah. It is called the table or the bread of his presence. Glory to God. I said glory to God in the highest. Oh yes. Oh yes. And if he is over you. Wait. Listen. If his countenance is over you, it means his mind is on you. Hallelujah. If his countenance is over you, Pastor Gigi, it means his eyes are over you. And what does the Bible say concerning that? It says, the Lord is looking upon. You got me? You got me? The Lord is looking upon his word. To do what? To perform it. Oh my God, this is teaching, my friend. This is sweet. Sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, when you know these things and you start practicing them, the presence of the Lord is there. And, and Paul says, you don't have to go to heaven to bring him. Some people have asked, who will go to heaven to bring him? Ah, who will go wherever he is? Where is he? They said, he is not in heaven that you may bring him, but by faith, seated on the table, and this is the biggest battle. This is the greatest battle of the mind. This is the greatest battle for souls. This is the greatest battle of a child of God. To be able to sit on this table and wait. Pastor, ni me marisa. Because I couldn't have time. Like in the mountain, I could pick one corner and change. See, can I take five minutes? Wana wana ripu a viripu ziuko. Like what is this? Let me just mention this seven, then we pick up tomorrow. The spirit of wisdom. So the Holy Ghost, the Lord is on you. He is imparting wisdom as you eat the eternal bread, the living bread. I'll talk about that tomorrow. He, is, he gives understanding. He gives counsel. He gives might. He gives knowledge. And he gives the fear of God. When that is in you, I tell you the truth, the concentration of the grace and the presence of God and the goodness of God and the authority of God, God, hallelujah, shall be upon you. It shall be upon you. I tell you the truth, when, you, when these things start operating with you, these graces start operating within, within you, I tell you the truth, even if it is ministry, you shall have an acceleration. Even if it is business, you shall have an acceleration. Whatever it is, this is God within you. Oh yes, Christ Jesus in us. The hope of acceleration. The hope and the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would have gone to 1 Corinthians and show you now how the New Testament interprets this matter. You can go and read 1 Corinthians 12, verse 8 to 10. Talking about the gifts of the Holy Ghost because you are in the light of the candlesticks. I remember, Pastor Gigi, even in the book of Revelation, G 
Jesus Christ is introduced as the one who walks among the candlesticks. Are we together? And we have all these, all these gifts of the Spirit. If you can receive this, the gift of miracles, I tell you the truth, you will move from one place to another. You will jump from one place to another. Why? Because the power of God is at work within you. And I'll take up there tomorrow. Pastor Mark, come and pray for us. Are you blessed? Are you instructed? May you shift. May you be shifted. Be shifted, be shifted. Start having peace with God's word. Start having peace with the living manna. I'll enter there tomorrow. Because you need grace to have peace and to make peace. 